Hello, this is Billy Core from Carolina Circle Mall. Today is Monday, August the 14th of 2017, and um, as you may recall, um, I just made a video about a Gateway 2486 desktop that was unfortunately dead on arrival and um, irreparable. Still really bummed out about that. Um, corrosion, what can you do about it? But it's going to live on as a um, wall decoration. Because <laughs> why not? <laughs> but I want to do a video tonight about something a little bit more um, happy. Um, I want to do an update on one of my favorite computers that's also a Gateway 2000. Big difference here is that this one is actually fully functional. <laughs> this is the Gateway 2000 P5133XL. Um, I did a overview video of it um, back in April. I believe it was my Easter video for this year. Um, I went over um, the details about the computer, the history of it. Um, just a recap, I bought this at Value Village in February of 2011 for fifteen dollars and it sat up in the attic for six years and I kept taking parts out of it for other systems and then back in I guess it was April of this year I decided I wanted to um, mess around with this system again and brought it back out of the attic found some parts to put in it to get it back up and running and uh, ever since then I've been um, adding stuff to it and upgrading it and it's been a really really good computer um, what I'm planning to do with this is actually make it into uh, my ultimate mid 90s dream computer with pretty much everything I would have dreamed of from for the time and I actually discovered something really really interesting about this computer um, last night, actually, um, I was looking at old PC mags on um, Google Books. Um, PC Mag was a um, magazine about um, personal computers that ran in the 80s and 90s, and Google has just about every edition of it archived. And I was looking at a edition of it from November 7th of 1995, and there was a big ad in there for Gateway 2000 and this computer had its own page and here's where it gets interesting um, turns out that this Gateway 2000 was there was Gateway 2000's 10th anniversary edition computer and it it's actually quite rare um, it was um, sold in November of 1995 for their 10th anniversary. I printed out a, um, a copy of the ad right here. I'll probably um, just edit it into the video for um, so you can see it better. It originally came with the 100, 133 megahertz Pentium, which is still in there. Windows 95, 16 megs of excuse me, 16 megs of memory and a 17 inch monitor as well as some really 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 nice Altec lensing speakers which unfortunately I do not have as well as a really good um, software package um, which I do not have although I do have some of the programs that it came with um, manually installed on here so yeah um, this is Gateways 10th anniversary computer and I you know I had thought about putting um, this up for sale and getting another Gateway 2000 but after reading that last night and discovering um, the uniqueness of it I'm gonna hold on to this computer <laughs> anyway um, what upgrades have I made to it since April um, well it's still got two optical drives here um, regular CD-ROM drive, a CD-RW drive. Um, I mainly only have it in here just to um, populate this empty slot. A um, 
three and a half inch um, floppy drive which is in an adapter right here um, to fit in a five and a quarter inch slot again to um, fill the void um, because keep in mind um, when this sat dormant for six years I, I stole all its slot blanks for other systems that I wound up not owning anymore so they're gone forever but um, as you recall earlier today when I got that broken Gateway 2000, um, it did have one slot blank right there that fit perfectly in this system. So I went on ahead and popped it in and um, it looks a little bit better now. I kind of wish I had another one, but I do have plans for upgrades on this system in the future. I don't want to go into detail about it right now because it's mainly because it's hard to explain, but um, yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. For um, display, it's using a NEC Multisync XV15 monitor, manufactured June of 1995, and it has a very, very beautiful picture on it. Great picture quality. Um, again, I am desperate, I mean desperate, to get a actual Gateway 2000 CRT monitor from the mid-90s. Um, much like that one right there. So, um, if anyone can um, show me how I can get one on the cheap, I will be eternally grateful because that would definitely help complete my um, gateway setup. Sidewinder 3D Pro joystick, of course. Um, Microsoft mouse. I actually picked this up at Value Village today for like 50 cents. Packard Bell keyboard. I was using a Gateway 2000 AnyKey keyboard, which would have come with this system originally, but I wound up selling it a couple of months ago because it was just, it was falling apart and I kind of needed the money at the time, so I sold it off. Um, so I'm using this Gateway, not this Gateway, this Packard Bell keyboard for the time being. I'm hoping to get a IBM Model M to use with this. Um, I think that would be really nice to use with a computer like this. And um, one more thing, you um, may recall in a video I made about a month ago when I installed Windows 3.1 on here, I had some issues running compact flashcards on here. Well, I'm, I, I was able to figure that out. I um, took the CF card adapter out of my um, corner Packard Bell right here and just put a 3 gigabyte um, standard hard drive in it and took the um, adapter and put it in this one and it works perfectly. I have, um, I use two CF cards on here now. I use an eight gigabyte CF card for Windows 95 and a two gigabyte CF card for Windows 3.1. So, um, yeah, I guess that's um, about it for the hardware end of things. Um, let's go ahead and fire it up and see what I've done on the software end of things. All right, let's go ahead and fire it up. The 10th anniversary edition Gateway 2000. What an honor. <laughs> okay, I have my um, Windows 3.1 compact flash card installed at the moment. So it's gonna boot into MS-DOS 6.22. I have Quim 97 installed. Oh, nearly forgot one upgrade I did make to the system was, um, as you recall, I was using a Sound Blaster 16 Vibra in here before. Well, um, it's now running a Sound Blaster All 64, and I gotta tell you, the wavetable on it sounds incredible, and I will demonstrate that. In a little bit. Actually, I think we need to zoom in on the monitor so you can see that better. That'll work. Okay, um, I guess the first thing I can show is a little bit of DOS gaming since we're in pure um, unadulterated DOS, so we'll go into the games directory. Feels weird using a Packard Bell keyboard on here, but hey, it works, and these are good keyboards. Um, huh, what should we play? 
How about um, a game I discovered recently? Um, I'm not sure if I have um, set up or not. Um, it's a little game called Tyrion. Speaker. Good old Epic Mega Games. Basically what this game is, is a um, kind of a top-down space shooter, do an arcade game, easy, Good luck. why thank you, the joystick is working, and already I'm doing terrible. Though I'm uh, still new to this. Now, this computer did originally come with. Um, Windows 95 from the factory, but it runs Dawson Windows 3.1 uh, without any trouble. I got the multi cannon! Go, but with a lot more going on. I know Lazy Game Reviews really enjoys this game. It's actually uh, where I found out about this game from. Games like this, it doesn't require much brain power. <laughs> Spikes are not good. Enemies ahead. Whoa, and I just ran into a spike. That's nice. Again, I'm still new to this game. Large enemy approaching. Oh, well, that's nice. Thank you. 
completed. You know, it's always nice when um, computer games listen to you. Very, very considerate. All right, let's head into Windows. Takes a little bit to boot up because of the network card. It's a 3Com network card in here, an ISA one. One of the most compatible ones you can imagine. And I got one moment. I got a text message I gotta answer. Okay, sorry about that. I had to take care of something for my dad, so I had to head out for a little bit, but I'm back and we are greeted with the Windows for Work Groups 3.11 program manager. Here's my custom um, Gateway 2000 wallpaper with the um, Carolina Circle Mall carousel, including a Gateway 2000 logo on the top right. Um, I also have a version of this for my Packard Bells. Um, same um, picture of the carousel, except the this logo here is replaced with the Packard Bell logo, obviously. <laughs> anyway, back into Program Manager. Um, we'll see what we got installed on here. We'll go into um, Productivity. really don't want to show a whole lot, because there's really no need to, because I showed a lot of this in, my, in some previous videos of this computer. Here's Microsoft Word. And by the way, most of the stuff um, I've been doing with this has been in Windows 95 anyway, so... Uh, So yeah, here's the games directory. I've got a lot of stuff installed on here, including uh, a bunch of... Hmm, let's look at the Maxis stuff. Um, let's load up Sim Tower. Uh, the display driver on this system does not appear to support the functionality that t Sim Tower requires. Now, this is a pretty good video card in here. And so far, it hasn't been good. Other than my ears. Boy, the sound's all skippy in this, but... I've always liked this game. I've been playing it since the late 90s, but I'm absolutely terrible at it. I, I always seem to run out of money. Much like, much like real life. ourselves an elevator. There we go. Remember, this being described as a vertical Sim City, which would make sense. Except I'm better at Sim City. <laughs> and don't know why the sound is scratchy in this game.
stop now we won't you get the picture <laughs> okay let's uh, get out of here and check out Windows 95 all right I've switched over to the Windows 95 CF card sorry for the refresh rate there hopefully it'll um, sort itself out when we're actually in Windows this is where most of the magic is on this computer in fact, this is what it came pre-installed with, anyway. Oh, forgot to mention, the, um, this computer was manufactured um, November the 24th of 1995, which was actually the day after Thanksgiving that year. So this was probably someone's Christmas present in 1995. Wish it were mine. <laughs> same wallpaper as before and I forgot to turn my um, Windows 2000 domain on but we can just uh, ignore that for now we don't need it for the moment and Windows 95 what can I say wonderful operating system uh, turn the volume back up a little bit <sighs> I've got my standard fare of um, software installed on here, including um, plenty of extras. Because i got an 8 gig drive in here, and I'm taking full advantage of it. I installed everything. I gave it the works. As well as Microsoft works. <laughs> okay, what can we um, play? Did Maxis in 3.1? Uh, that was about a little bit of Jazz Jackrabbit 2, which runs just fine on um, this system. this what's funny about this is the menus um, run really slow on this computer but when you get into the actual game it runs just fine I'm just gonna load up my save game from the other day You can see my shadow in the monitor. It's a very shiny, glossy screen on here. Uh. Uh. <laughs> oh, well, this is nice. <laughs> Reliability, thy name is not my Windows 95. And I just made it worse. Can't even get Task Manager to. Live television, folks. Live television. Did I kill it? Oh. We're doing a reboot. <laughs> well, 
We'll be back in a moment, folks, with hopefully um, a more prosperous experience. Alright, let's try this again. <laughs> this usually doesn't happen. This computer's a little bit more reliable than what you just saw. Let's see, it froze when I tried to kill this guy. Well, almost um, screwed up again there, but looks like it got itself together. And this is a Cirrus Logic video card in this computer, PCI, not original, obviously. We we'll get the exact model number, but it's a um, it's got four megs of video memory and it's um, 3D which explains why this game um, runs a little bit better than it should on a system like this. In a moment I'll show you another game that runs really well on here. steps here and get these coins. I know I've said this before, but I'm surprised I did not have this game growing up. Because it looks like looks exactly like the kind of game I would have wanted. But it is not a Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT friendly game. Uh, I've tried running it on there and it is very, very slow, very, very choppy, and not a very pleasant experience. So, if I had owned this game as a kid, I probably really wouldn't have enjoyed it considering the hardware I would have been running it on at the time. I'll save the game here because I want to sh show another game. I want to keep this video um, not from getting overly long. Now, one of my um, favorite games as a kid was Monster Truck Madness, the original one. Um, in fact, it, I was so into that game that for several years I actually went to um, the Monster Truck Rally at the Greensboro Coliseum in the late 90s. But they actually made a sequel to that game, which was also pretty good, but still not as nostalgic for me. But we will take a quick look at it. This is Monster Truck Madness 2. and it runs really really well on here it takes takes a very good advantage of um, the 3d capabilities of the um, video card I have installed on here of course I always got to play as Carolina Crusher uh, find a good uh, track to run on uh, that'll work and we'll make it um, rain, since it was actually raining here in Greensboro today. I really need to get a um, PC to TV encoder card for out to use out here. So I can get direct capture from here. Or even better, an Avermedia game capture card. Too bad they're kind of expensive.
Oh yeah, this game is going to glitch. Sometimes this uh, this game, as well as um, Monster Truck Madness One, will um, take its Sidewinder take my Sidewinder Three Pro and cause its point of field control to malfunction, causing um, the view to change like that at random points. Not very fun. And neither is that. <laughs> I swear, this, this computer runs a lot better than it than you've been seeing on camera. Take my word for it, please. <laughs> See there it went again. And of course, the day I want to make a video about this computer, it decides to give me problems. <laughs> but again, I swear, this computer is reliable. <laughs> Good grief. I know we can get through this course. In the bushes. I used to say that when I was a kid. We in the bushes. Made no sense. But I said it anyway. Ah. Yes it is. Ah, stupid point of view hat. As much as I love um, using these Sidewinder 3D Pros, I'm thinking about using a different joystick in, on this system just because of little stupidities like this. Just that checkpoint. Very annoyed. Right now I'm just holding on to the point of view point of field hat just to try to keep it in line. Again, I swear this computer usually runs a lot nicer than this. <laughs> Maybe it's just camera shy. <laughs> Just barely. <sighs> it's this. It's this little thing right here that's being the bane of my existence. This little knob right here. Oh well. <laughs>
Anyway, um, enough... Enough gaming for, um, tonight. Let's show off the, um... The All64. Um, first, let's show it up in Device Manager. So we got an All64 16-bit audio SP16 compatible, and the All64 Wavetable MIDI, which is what literally makes beautiful music. And I'm going to demonstrate that with the um, famous Windows 95 Easter Egg. And for those who don't know how to do that, you um, go to your desktop, make a new folder, and name it all in lowercase, and now, comma, the moment you've all been waiting for. Enter. And then you're going to rename it again. We proudly present for your viewing pleasure again all in lowercase and now we're going to rename it again this time with each word um, the first letter capitalized the, the Microsoft Windows 95 product team exclamation mark and um, just so you can get a better feel to how um, MIDI sounds on the Sound Blaster All64 I am actually going to um, I'm actually going to um, directly capture the sound from here so um, you can um, get a clear um, sound from this. So um, enjoy! Okay, it sounded pretty good, didn't it? <laughs> you know, the All64, I can't believe I, um, I had this card lying around for a few months now. I 
don't know why I didn't go with this originally in this system. Um, this originally came with um, an Insonic sound card, which um, the drivers for it were very, were very, very, very finicky and hardly worked with anything. So, um, yeah, I ditched that card in a heartbeat. <laughs> and I don't miss it one bit. So this computer is definitely um, a Sound Blaster friendly computer. So I guess that's about it for now. Um, I'll go ahead and shut it down for the night. And this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The addresses are located in the bottom right corner. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.